In the beginning, there was darkness, and then, bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Now, see further than we've ever imagined, beyond the limits of our existence, in a place we call the universe. Our infinite universe is brimming with strange, violent, and potentially life-transporting phenomena. Imagine cosmic portals where objects could disappear, be ejected, or escape to some other place in space or time. They are tickets to oblivion, for the most part. Either you get shredded in a black hole, you get transported to another part of the universe in a wormhole, or you get obliterated by the gusher of a white hole. Blast off to the warp side of the universe as scientists search for black holes, white holes, and wormholes. Are they frivolous fantasies or a science fact? The universe is a cosmic cornucopia of endless possibilities. Imagine a shuttle service to anywhere in the cosmos. It's not aboard a futuristic spaceship. It's a galactic ride through a wormhole, a theoretical tunnel providing shortcuts through space and time. Wormholes are a little bit like a subway system that you might use in the city, where you're going into a hole, you go through a tunnel, and then you come out at the other end through another hole, and then you've traveled through the city. Same thing would be possible in a wormhole to travel between different points in the universe. Physicist Clifford Johnson has contemplated the possibility of wormholes. The difference between a uh, wormhole and a uh, subway system is that you're using the wormhole to travel a greater distance than you would if you were traveling in ordinary space. In theory, a wormhole has a throat connected to an entrance and exit called mouths, located in different parts of space. A wormhole is appealing because we're limited by the speed of light. We can't get to the Andromeda galaxy in less than uh, something like 600,000 years, even moving at the speed of light. I keep wondering if the really next big discovery in astronomy could be a wormhole. Not just because they're fun for people like me, but because they could take us to some place that we can't plausibly ever get any other way. Gregory Benford has pondered the science and fiction of outer space. As both a physicist and author of over 30 sci-fi novels, Benford has witnessed fantastical theories become a reality. A lot of us would like to know if wormholes really exist or whether they're just another mathematical construct thought up by Einstein the genius. Albert Einstein's general relativity laws allow for the existence of wormholes. In 1930, Einstein and his colleague Nathan Rosen calculated the mathematics of one of these intergalactic pipelines. It became known as the Einstein-Rosen Bridge. A wormhole is a solution of Einstein's equations for general relativity, telling us how gravity works. They're hypothetical, and what they do is they connect different parts of space and time. The Einstein-Rosen mathematical wormhole arose from studying black holes. A black hole is a region in space of extremely strong gravity. The gravity is so strong that there is no way for objects that get too near to break away from its gravitational pull. Nothing can escape a close encounter with a black hole, not even light. This inverted fountain serves as a visual analogy to what's going on around a black hole. At the bottom is the uh, area inside the event horizon. 
and the water falling into it is analogous to gas that might fall into a black hole. Imagine yourself being a fish swimming around this region. Once you get down inside this central portion, you're past the point of no return. But Einstein never intended his wormhole as a tool for space travel. His wormhole is theoretically created at some moment of time. It opens up briefly, then pinches off. Anything that tries to pass through it will get crushed when it squeezes apart. A typical wormhole that you write down in your equations and study is unstable. It'll vanish in an incredibly short time. So what you need is some means of holding it open. After Einstein's wormhole was determined unstable in the 1960s, little research was done on the concept. Then, the sci-fi film Contact was released in the late 1990s. Based on the book by renowned astronomer Carl Sagan, it proposed that a wormhole could be used for space travel. The book Contact and then subsequently the movie was a nice place in fiction uh, that was accessible to everyone where you could see the idea of a wormhole. So it was a nice way of getting people interested in that idea all over again. This was kind of a very far-fetched idea that wasn't even considered very seriously by many physicists until Carl Sagan decided to write this book and try to make it as realistic as possible. And since that time, theoretical physicists studying Einstein's general theory of relativity have considered travel through wormholes. Scientists began to investigate whether there might be a type of wormhole different from Einstein's that is traversable. But traversable wormholes needed something to prevent them from pinching off. You want to stabilize the wormhole. You don't want the wormhole to collapse. Keep the wormhole open. That requires something new called negative matter or exotic matter. We've never seen negative matter before. It would have anti-gravitational properties. But one day, if we ever find negative matter, perhaps that's the key to stabilize the wormhole. The idea of a traversable wormhole captivated science fiction enthusiasts. It also reinvigorated the serious study of wormholes within the science community. This transversible wormhole created quite a sensation. Because perhaps it is physically possible to one day build a subway system to another galaxy. The term wormhole came from an analogy with an apple. You want to get from 